Hi, I'm Sean Smith. This is Sean Smith Photos, where I edit street photography and occasional travel photos with On One Photo Raw. Let's just jump right into it. Uh, so you can see this photo here. This was taken at Nathan Phillips Square in downtown Toronto. And that big circle is the O in the Toronto sign, but taken from behind. So in any case, I like this photo for a couple of reasons. Uh, we've got the big circle, uh, some bright colors, big lines, and then we've got these three people here in the shade along the bottom. There's also some people over here walking away. Uh, I'm going to work on the shot in the full aspect ratio, but I am strongly leaning towards cropping it square because I, I think this is a little bit of a distraction, but I'm going to wait and see how it comes. So generally, the first thing I do when editing photos is go into the develop tab and choose noise and sharpening. And I hit the no noise button, wait a minute for it to do its magic. And generally, I don't change things in here because I find it to be incredibly, incredibly good at what it does. Like if you take a look along the edge here where it's zoomed in, right side is sharpened, left side is not sharpened, and I drag this over, watch that. It just makes everything so nice and crisp, doesn't really introduce much noise, and Really, you just can't go wrong with uh, that. So I'm going to accept that as it is, apply it. And then I'm going to go into Tone and Truck Color. And before I do anything here, I have a problem with my photography is that my horizon is often a little bit off kilter. So the first thing I'll do is crop my photo and level it with the level icon up here by finding either a horizontal or vertical line drawing along it and then hit enter or apply and the photo is now magically straight. This is really really good for me because I don't know I just can't see things straight when I'm shooting. Okay so the next thing to do is auto AI and this is a, a great way to just see what adjustments on one thinks are important for your shot. So I'm going to hit that. Brightened it up. Uh, we can see that didn't change anything in the exposure. It upped the contrast a little bit, up the midtones and the shadows. Now I wanted the shadows up because these guys back here were kind of buried in the shadows. And this lightened that up a little bit. I think the midtones can go back down a bit. Yeah, I like I like that a little bit better, like that. I usually play with reducing haze just a smidge, and then upping the structure a little bit. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good right there. And to we can see what our original photo was with the backslash key, or at the bottom by pressing, turning off the preview button. So original and what we've done so far, or I can use the backslash key. Uh, Hotkeys are godsend in any sort of application. So learn your hotkeys as you can and it will improve your workflow speed. Okay, so at this point, I'm pretty happy with what we've developed here. And now I'm gonna head into effects. One of the first effects I usually apply is dynamic contrast. It's just going to make things pop a little bit more. I typically hit the natural setting or sometimes surreal, but in this case, surreal is like just way over the top. I suppose I could pull back on the opacity, but I think I'm just going to stick with the dynamic, uh, the natural preset and on and off. That does a really nice job here, getting the supports in the O and pulling out a little bit of detail on these people. So I think I'll keep that as that is. 
then next, <coughs> excuse me, next we'll probably go in and do another curve, make an S curve. Again, everything I'm doing here is kind of adding contrast. It's one of my things. I like I like things a little contrasty, but you know, I try not to over contrast it. And I think that looks good. And now I'm looking at this shot and I think that, yeah, I am going to crop this out and go square because this is a little distracting. The circle and these three people are the main focus. So let's do that. Uh, press C to get the crop tool. And you can see it's already cropped from when we straightened it, but now I'm gonna change it to square and I'm gonna move things around. Oops, come on. I don't know why it's not letting me move anything. Hmm. Might be an issue with the screen recording software that I'm using. So we'll bring this in. Don't really want this person in here. So I'm just trying to crop as much as get the square as big as possible without pulling in her arm and kind of even up the space on the top and the bottom, the left and the right. Yeah, okay, so that looks pretty good. I think we can see a little bit here, but we can probably hide that with some uh, a vignette or maybe a little bit of uh, masking or just removing it. In any case, we'll crop in here. This looks good. And let's add in a vignette. So we'll pull in our vignette filter. Okay, so there's several vignettes you can choose from. And if we hover over each of them on this dropdown, it gives us a preview of what each of them do. do. Now, my Three favorites are the ones that, whoops, appear right here, subtle, strong, and big softy. So I think we'll start off with big softy and see how it looks. I think that's a little bit too much strong. Yeah, that's also a little too much for what I want here. And subtle, I like the subtle. Let's play with the brightness a little bit. Yeah, I think we'll adjust it here. Yeah, that looks okay. Before and after, before and after. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. Um, let's also go and change this to a black and white shot so that we can really focus on tones and things like that. All right, so we'll go with the black and white filter. Does a nice job straight out of the box, but like all filters in on one, we've got a series along the bottom here. And you can, again, you can hover over each of them to see how it affects your photo. So I typically like Adele, Coffee, and Deep Black. These are some of my favorites. In this case, I kind of like the coffee filter. I'm going to go with that. Now, what you can see here is that we have a little bit of a problem with the yellow and the white. They don't really look that different. So if I turn it off and then I turn it back on, it's a very pale gray and a bright white, and they almost look the same next to each other in the photo. But we can, we can easily fix that by going to this yellow tab and darkening the yellow. I think that's a, a nice part there. And in the same way, we can address this issue where this woman is kind of fading into the red background. Let's look at this. See, that was a bright red. And I can do that by hitting the red and increasing the brightness. We've got that there, but now, oh, we, maybe we need to darken the yellow. 
now uh, that's good let's like that for the yellow what about the red no that's too bright oh hmm yellow let's just play around with this a little bit Yeah, okay. I think this is all right here. So we can see her a little bit better. We've got some contrast between all three of them. Um, yeah, okay. So let's hide that. These people here are still really, really dark. So we want to pull them out, make them a little bit more visible. And to do that, I'm going to use a tone enhancer. So I'll pull out the tone enhancer and just as with everything, we have all the things on the uh, all the options in the pop out, and I'm thinking that I want mid tones lighter. Yeah, that looks good. Now, what we've got going on here is this is kind of affecting everything in the picture equally, where we mostly want just this area here from the top of their heads to you know around the ankles down here to be brightened and we can achieve that with a mask so we'll get this we'll go grab the masking bug which is over here and the masking bug option that we want is the reflected gradient and the reflected gradient is awesome because i'm going to drop it here we get four lines and they can all move independent of one another whereas with the gradient your lines there's a center line and the feathering lines work together so if you increase the top the bottom increases but i don't want that here because what i really want is up to about her foot at the bottom to be in the filter and then just above her head and you can see here, looking at the filter, that I've kind of got it backwards because uh, black conceals, white reveals. This is easily fixed by either flipping it manually like this, or I can just hit the invert button. Okay, so I've inverted that. And if I zoom out, you can see my feather down here. I just want it, in this case, I want it to be right against the edge. And we'll zoom in again. Uh, actually, let's hit, the, oops, let's hit the fit. And we'll make this feather a little bit bigger. I think that looks pretty good. And to adjust with the tone exposure, typically, what it, where it does the work is right here in the curves. So you could update this yourself. You could really pull up the mid-tones here. I'm just going to control Z to pull it back. Uh, however, you want to mess with the curves. However, I think I'm just going to work a little bit more on the shadows. Yeah, that's good. Pull up the highlights a little bit more. And maybe the exposure. Yeah, that looks nice. Let's turn this off and on. Now, if you look close, I'm not sure if it'll show up on YouTube, but you can kind of see the line here. So I'm going to increase the, the feather. And then we're going to view the mask. And I really like the red overlay but sometimes you might want to see the mask uh, in grayscale in which case you go to mask view mode and change that to grayscale and we can see it like this but in this case our view mode red overlay works best and yeah i think i'm happy with this yeah that looks good All right, so I'm going to add one more tone enhancer because I've, I've lightened this part up, but I actually want to darken everything around the back. 
So let's add a tone enhancer. And we'll do this. We'll do uh, darken. Darker to start with. And once again, we'll hit the mask. And this time we want the gradient, but we want the vignette. So I'm going to drop the vignette here. And I'm going to pull this down. And we basically want to have the edges of the vignette right around the circle. And go like that. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty good. We can clean this up with the brush after. And yeah, we're darkening everything here. It's, actually, let's reduce the feather. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. And we'll tighten this in just a titch. Maybe just a titch up here. And hit the V key to get remove that there. Okay, so this is looking pretty good, except that we've got this really unnatural brightness right here. So I think what we need to do is kind of brighten up this whole area. And we'll do that with our masking tool. And just look for this thing to fade away. Uh, mask, get a brush, increase the brush size. And let's view it. We can view the mask, control M. And I want to paint in. So I can change from paint out to paint in here, or I can hold down the Alt key, and now it's paint in. So let's take a look. Feather is good. Opacity. And I don't know why my phone is ringing, but it's a spam call. And I'm going to paint out by accident. Let's paint in. And let's just grab a spot right here. And we'll paint out just a little bit. Brush that in like that. And decrease the font size here. And uh, all right, so I'm back from my phone call. And uh, let's finish touching up uh, with the brush. Pull him back in here because you got little brushed out. All right, so I think this mask looks okay. Let's turn the mask off. And yeah, so this, this looks a little bit more natural here because it's fading in more. Let's brush, over, no, actually let's brush this part out. Maybe in between her legs a little bit, down there, between this guy's legs too. And let's go in between his legs, on the side over here. Yeah, okay. So th this looks pretty good. And we'll, you can see in the mask icon here how it looks. And then we go like this. And let's change the view mode to grayscale. And yeah, so you can see that it's different shades of gray. So we're revealing more the lighter it is. And that darkens up. So everything that's black is dark and then lighter gray is, is less darkened. We'll turn off the view mode. And let's copy this mask and I'm going to try something probably not going to stick with it but we'll just see so I'm going to add a lens blur and we'll paste in our mask and 
this is way too strong, so we'll drop this probably down to like a one or a two. Let's go with a two for now. And all right, so yeah, I'm I think that does a nice job on the background and making the foreground pop in here. But what we gotta do is pull up this opacity on our brush and everything that is on the same plane as our subject needs to be in focus and not blurred. So let's fix that up. Just brush that in. And let's uh, view the mask, make sure I didn't miss anything. Actually, let's change the mask to red overlay. Change the mask to red over. What? Oh, I can't see the red overlay. Where did you go? Oh, <laughs> I have to turn it back on. Okay, some of this is a little bit faded out. brush around here really quickly and just to see how it looks I know I'm making a mess I'm gonna either undo it or clean it up yeah I think that looks a little bit better so let's put this back on and then we'll spend a little bit of time cleaning it up I'm holding down the alt key so it's brush out or sorry, paint in right now. I'm brushing out the mask, but I'm painting in the effect. And then I'm gonna paint out the effect right here, because you could see if I zoom in. There we go. Uh, brush that out. And yes, I know I can use the refine tools, but I don't think I need to get super fine on this. I just need to really rough it in along the edge here and This video is too long. I'm going to find out if my screen recording software has an option for me to speed up part of it. And I'll probably speed up this part over the masking. All right, let's go back to fit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And brush in really soft brush here. Actually, there we go. View mode off. Actually, yeah. Um, on, off, on, off, on. Yeah, I think that does a pretty good job. I might keep that on there. Uh, I think it's a little bit strong, so let's try dropping it down to one. Uh, let's type that in manually and yeah maybe drop the opacity a little bit so it'll be even it'll be like less than one and yeah there we go that's a nice subtle lens lens blur that draws our focus to these people here okay and Let's go back to our vignette, revisit that, revisit our vignette. Let's try Big Softy. Hmm, Big Softy. Undo that. Maybe strong. 
I like the strong one a little bit better now. Let's reduce the size. Oops, or increase the size. This is feather. Yeah, I think I think that is pretty good. And yeah, I'm gonna call this an edit. And so I'm gonna hit the backslash key so we can see what the photo looked like originally and what we ended up with. I am happy with that. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe and uh, watch the next ones that are coming out.